Hey guys, welcome back to the arena and the new set. Super excited here to jump into Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Um, first of all, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing or maybe sharing it with a friend. For my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back and supporting me. I really do appreciate you guys. You guys are the backbone of the channel. Um, in addition, I did want to let you know that there is a deck list here. Um, it is going to be in the description both at moxfield and untapped.gg uh, and then there also should be a link in the description for the full playlist here if you want to go back and see some of the earlier videos um, of my road to rank one that we're trying to hit rank one mythic by the end of the month um, so with that out of the way just i uh, wanted to give a shout out here um, to again my first member thank you so much if you do want to consider um, becoming a member it's a great way to help support the channel so kibo Thank you so much again. I really do appreciate you and your support. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So. These are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys, and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, let's jump in. So I made a couple changes. Now that we're back to best of one, really excited to dive into the new um, updated Mono White Humans. And there were a couple cards. So if you saw my last video where I kind of went over some of my top picks, for the new set, especially with a mind of like mono white aggro or mono white humans, there's a couple cards here that we've added to the mix. So number one, I've added Grand Abolisher. And I do want to give a shout out to you guys. I think somebody mentioned that uh, this is going to be a card in the set and super excited because this is a very, very powerful effect, especially an aggressive strategy. So part of the reason that um, I was able to make room for this, I haven't seen quite as much of the world souls rage deck it definitely is out there i think it's just a lot more represented in best of three um so who knows maybe we'll see a lot more of it here but i ended up taking out the copies of sun gold sentinel which is still a very powerful card and i'm not sure if it's if it's the the right choice i should be making but i replaced it with three copies of grand abolisher and grand abolisher such a powerful effect to be able to turn off all of your opponent's abilities to cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments on your turn. Um, basically, it shuts down all counter spells, um, among other things. So I think it's going to be a great card and a great addition to the deck. Part of the reason that I'm running three is because, again, um, if you ever have two in play, the effect doesn't double in any way. So you want to be able to see one a game. And also, there's just a lot competing for slots in this deck. So I feel like three is probably correct. The other thing that I did is I ended up changing out the land count. As a result of running Grand Abolisher, because you need double white on two, it is quite a bit more color specific. Um, before, I was able to get away with a playset of Mishra's Foundry because I didn't need double white until turn three for Adeline. But now with double white on two, I decided to replace all of the Mistress Foundries and bring in three copies of Murex just to make sure that we can reliably hit double white on two while still getting some benefit here to help us kind of go long. Um, the other card that I brought in from the new set is Lava Spur Boots, and I am super excited about this. I had a chance to play a couple games today um, right after the set dropped, and I can tell you that they are the real deal. Being able to give... Um, haste to effectively all of your new creatures, um, admittedly one at a time, but as they come out in a mono white deck, is really powerful. The extra ward is certainly a nice benefit, and the plus one plus zero helps make it a little bit more aggressive, but even just being able to get haste, oh my god, what a powerful effect. So I think two copies feels right. Um, we still need to have a lot of creatures here to be able to trigger Knight Errant of Eos reliably, but Given that, this just basically makes every single card that you top deck in the late game a threat. And for decks like blue-white control, um, you know, or other strategies that just try to wipe your board over and over, 
Lava Spur Boots is where it's at. So with those changes, um, a couple other changes, just kind of shifting around numbers here. So in order to make room for Lava Spur Boots, I ended up cutting one recruitment officer down to three and one hopeful initiate down to two. And this way we still have nine one drops that are creatures and then kind of the Lava Spur Boots get us to 11. Um, March can be anywhere from, you know, a one drop to a bit later there on the curve, just depending on what we're up against. But I think that March has been like one of the biggest MVPs of this deck that I've noticed over the last couple games. It's just so, so clutch against Boros, being able to um, react and get rid of their Gleeful Demolition target. And it has just a lot of utility against so many decks. I had a recent game where I was up against um, a deck, some sort of control deck that uh, was running double white and I had Thalia down, and so we were set up to kind of come in for the final turn. They had one turn to kind of drop um, temporary lockdown, and I just held up mana for other March of the Otherworldly Light, basically stopped their lockdown from mattering, and then swung in for the win. So this is really, really good against that, too. But uh, yeah, other than that, I've also kind of monkeyed around with some of the numbers here a little bit. I feel like we need three Brutal Cathar just because we want to have enough removal. We've got four March, three Brutal Cathar, and then four copies of Iganjo to get us to functionally 11 pieces of removal, although not a, not all of it's ideal. But I think it's enough to kind of get things going. And then I also found that Thalia, I could shave that down to three copies, and this still is giving us a great effect where I'm not just kind of drawing two or three copies um, in my hand. So all that said, let's hop into some games. Um, I don't have a sideboard here for best of three yet. I wanted to kind of sort of think back through it and see if I can come up with something just because this is best of one. I'm hoping to start building a sideboard there just so that I have something for you guys who are playing best of three to check out. So let's hop into some games. Okay, opening hand looks great. We've got one, two, three, and a little bit of removal here in March. So feeling pretty good about this. There's so many new cards that I've never seen before, so definitely will kind of <laughs> be interesting to see what we run into here. So we could just march right now. Um, I think up against this deck, I think kind of the plan is I want to march what they play and then probably add a lean on three to be able to get in. So instead of just playing adversary here, I guess we could also play recruitment officer. But I guess if they if they drop like Calyx next turn, I want to be able to answer it and still be able to, to march it. So I think I'm just going to... Yeah, I think I'm just going to sit and just see what they do. There's a chance they run Calyx. I suppose I could have also just played Officer there if I thought they were going to play like a 2-drop. Probably like Jukai but I think this is okay. We want to get rid of the, the naturalist here. The Kami is also super problematic. So I guess if they get in with Kami, we can just kind of go for... I guess let's wait and see if they attack to decide what we want to march here. So now if we march Jukai Naturalist, we should be able to attack back profitably. That does leave a Kami of Transgents on the board, which I'm not thrilled about. But since we've got Adversary, I feel okay about it. So here, I guess we just 
Um, let's go ahead and pay two and pitch the recruitment officer to get rid of their naturalist. So hopefully we can draw into something to deal with our Kami. That's definitely going to be the major issue here. I mean, we've got adversary, but this is still going to be putting a ton of pressure on us. So if we go adversary here, that'll bring Adeline to a X5. Um, it's going to be... Let's see, three, and then if it attacks, four, five. It's not enough to block the Kami by itself, but we'll have, I guess, the adversary if we need to. The other option here we could go for is, like, everything else. Um, actually, I guess we could do, like, adversary plus Thalia, kind of slow down their stuff. Hmm. I think I'm okay with just going for adversary here. We're probably going to need it in terms of uh, blocking the Kami. And then I'm going to hold back the 2-2 here just as a nod to the fact that this could get huge. Alright, so they are forcing blocks. Unfortunately, we're going to have to double block with Adeline and Adversary here if we want to kill it. Um, otherwise, we could just like chump with Adversary, go up to 14. Uh, we do lose quite a bit of steam then, so we're only pushing a little bit of damage and this is not dealt with. So I think we kind of have to double block here. And I guess we just keep around our token. So it's possible that we should have exiled their, um, their Kami instead of the Jukai Naturalist, but like... I don't know, it's, it's always a hard choice because, like, making the rest of their spells cheaper and having lifelink is super nasty. Now we've got a couple lines. We could just play everything here. We could all go for Officer and try to find an answer. I think if they have one of, like, their enchantment removals and can double it there with Harmony, we probably want to play out as much as we can and not just fall behind quite a bit so I think that's probably what I'm going to do just kind of play everything here Thalia will help by at least making things a little bit more expensive this way if they don't hit land 4 then they won't be able to um, double removal Question is now, do we go for like the triple block here or try to
try to trade officer. Like, we'll gain some life, but I'm not sure that it's worth it since they don't have trample. Um, yeah, I think we just take it here, honestly. Copper coat's pretty nice. And then I think, so next turn if they, I guess depending on like what they have in hand, but if they push with everything, do we need to have Luminous Phantom held back or not? Um, I don't think we need to. I'm gonna try to finesse a damage here, see if we can get away with it. And they've got the audacity. Oh, that's nasty. <sighs> Alright, so unfortunately they get to make another enchantment here, regardless of what they do. They're probably going to make another weaver, I would guess, or another Jukai naturalist. It's not looking good for our heroes here. Um, I guess if we block like this... We're taking five, go to one. is pretty good um, but they've got double naturalist <sighs> yeah I just don't know how we win this fight here I think attacking for one in the air is now basically suicide, so I think we just hold, see what they do, try to respond. But we're pretty much, I mean, this is looking really bad. Yeah, and they've got Michiko's Reign. Okay. Wow, they have double Michiko's Reign. Okay, that's pretty rough. So let's see, if we get rid of the naturalist, and then we need, yeah, four chumps, yeah, it's gonna do it. I don't honestly know if it be, would have been like a ton different if we got rid of the um, Kami of Transients instead. I guess it had trample, so that's a thing to consider, but just giving them extra mana just always feels terrible. OK, 
Okay, opening hand looks good. One, two, flying. Oh, God. <laughs> That's really good. Um, okay, so now I think we want to play Thalia just to slow down their spells. And then I think we just go Brutal Cathar this turn. Even if they spend time killing the, the Cathar, it'll sort of waste their turn, and um, I think that that's probably worth it. Otherwise, we, I suppose we could play like Recruitment Officer and then Holdy Ganjo, that's another option. And I guess they have a ton more, probably more removal in their hand, so that might be better than playing the Cathar now. Okay, so we'll get rid of that one. And now we can uh, drop Lava Spur and Vanguard. And we're doing, a, doing pretty well on life. Yeah, I had a, a, a game earlier today playing against uh, Demir, and um, the Lava Spur boots, the Lava Spur boots were quite good. No one drop here, but happy to keep. Our hand looks really, really powerful. So I think we could go, um, let's see, against planes. Don't have its control over its aggro. I think just leading out with Vanguard here is good because it sets up a nice Adeline. A little unfortunate with the Thalia, but that's okay. Now we could go Knight Errant here and try to find an answer for an Impa Call or just set up Adversary. Um, and I think we want to get Adversary going. Although I suppose Knight Errant's pretty good too. Um, with Adversary, they're still able to block successfully for the little token. So we'll only be pushing, what would that be? Four, five, six, which isn't bad. Like we can still attack effectively without it. So maybe we just push um, and then go for 
go for Knight Errant here instead. I think that's probably the play. Question is, do we fully tap out for it? Like, if we're expecting to hit like a one drop, um, could be good. I guess if they have like Brutal Cathar next turn, well, they would need Brutal Cathar plus a mana since we have Copper Coat. So yeah, I think it's probably okay. All right, definitely picking up Copper Coat. Do we want our own Thalia? I think I'm actually okay with a veteran here. Just to be able to put something else in play. We just take the three. Um, hmm. Because I could see like a big push next turn, like with adversary. So I think, yeah, we just take the three here. March is pretty good too. Okay, so now we can go. March for three plus Vanguard, and then get rid of Anim Pakal. That feels pretty good. And I think we keep Adversary here um, and pitch Adeline, even though they could probably trade Roaming Throne, but I think we're okay if they do. Now we just push for a lot. And that'll do it. Yeah, March has just been so good. Okay, up against World Souls Rage. Unfortunately, we don't have Sun Gold Sentinel anymore, but I think it's still a, we still have a decent game against them if we're aggressive enough. And I don't know that they have a lot of spells on two. Question is, do we want to go for Copper Coat and just maximize damage, or go for Thalia here? I guess i probably just go Thalia. I, I guess the downside of going Thalia is if they end up going for like Analyst next turn, we definitely want to get rid of it. But they won't be able to do that right away. So like if you go Copper Code, um, next turn we can go like Officer plus March if we need to. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to go for Thalia since we're going to want it anyways. Just to slow down like their ill-timed explosion. Yeah, so they went for Analyst here, and that makes sense. Don't need to get rid of it just yet.
Okay, and they've got the Nissa to go with it. So the question is, which of these is more dangerous? Probably Nissa, because Nissa just replaces Aftermath Analyst anyways. So yeah, I think we just march the Nissa and push. We could also go Copper Coat here and push for a lot, but I feel like it's dangerous leaving this thing around. Um, what do we want to get rid of here? Probably Adversary, just because getting to four is pretty unlikely. Although it does like push pretty well like through Nissa, so maybe the Officer. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to pitch Adversary since we do have like these Copper Coats. Oh, hang on a second here. Whoops. Ah. Gonna have to do it post-combat here. Forgot about the Thalia. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have to settle for getting rid of Analyst here, unfortunately. And I think we do want to do that instead of playing Vanguard. That is the downside of running Thalia out. So maybe we should, like, I guess against in this matchup, maybe it'd be better to hold Thalia for, like, the turn before the ill-timed explosion. Yeah, now we're still stuck on land. Oh, this is awkward. So yeah, I think in hindsight, it probably would have been better to play the Vanguard on two instead of the Thalia, just because it kind of tied up our own march, which made it awkward. We would have been able to get rid of the Nyssa, and they'd still have the Aftermath Analyst, but I think Nyssa is the more dangerous card. Especially since it like replaces itself. Yeah, now they can just like ill-timed explosion with impunity here. Question is, do they have it? Okay. 
Okay, so we play Adeline. Two blocks. We don't put him at lethal, unfortunately. But we've got everything else ready to go. I guess if they haven't got ill-timed explosion, there's like a chance here. All right, so much for that. <laughs> oh well. Nice thing is now we can go like officer plus lava spur boots, which feels pretty good. But they're gonna have another Nissa ready to go. Yeah, and unfortunately they probably just got us here since they have another aftermath analyst and a ton more mana to go get. Plus lots of like memory deluges. And there's the virtue. So that's probably just game. Well, I guess they can't kill us this turn. Actually, do they have enough mana? They might have enough mana. Yeah, I assume we're just like dead on our turn, right? And they just uh, like World Souls Rage for a billion here, I assume.
So I think we could have, yeah, played that a little bit differently instead of running the Thalia out early. As long as we play it before, like, their turn four, when they have access to ill-timed explosion, it's probably fine. Swing and a miss. I think we might just want to go like adversary. Actually, we can go initiate here. Maybe like initiate and then swing with both. We could also go Cathar, but I feel like they definitely have removal for Cathar. Um, otherwise, we just try to like build up a board and then get ready for Knight Errant. Yeah, I think they have enough removal that we don't want to just like throw stuff away at this Moss Wood uh, Dread Knight. So I think the play here is maybe just Initiate plus Adversary, as weird as that looks. Okay, now we can go Vanguard into Night Errant. That feels pretty good. I'm kind of surprised they attacked there. I guess they could be like setting up a board wipe, perhaps. Some tiny bones of pickpocket. Death touch. Okay, they just wanted a death touch creature. That's fine. So we could go like copper coat plus shove with a lot. We could also go Brutal Cathar here and push. Again, I think they still have a decent amount of removal, so I'm not crazy about um, Brutal Cathar and push. We could give it Ward, though. I mean, like, it, we already actually have some Ward on it, so maybe that's the move, actually. I kind of like Copper Coat first, though. Like Copper Coat plus Lava Spur. Otherwise, we can just push and use like Iganjo. We could also go like Adeline and then equip and then swing with that also. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with Copper Coat here.
think we just shove. Like, I guess they could get some, they could kill both of our copper coats, which would be annoying. Um, otherwise, we just shove with everything else. That might be worth it, too. I guess if they block both copper coats, they're taking six, ten, yeah. They need to have, like, cut down here. We're still pushing a lot of damage, even if they have cut down. And they need, like, specifically cut down here. Um, do we want to play this Aganjo? Yeah, I think we want to play the Aganjo. Just to make sure to to give ourselves an extra layer of ward. Interesting. So I assume they go Deadly Cover Up here. Like, that's got to be what they've got. But even Deadly Cover Up, we still have them. Since we've got Lava Spur Boots. Yeah, I just love these Lava Spur Boots. They're so good. So now even, like, Board Wipes don't matter. Yep, that's not good enough. <laughs> nice. All right, slowly climbing. We went three and two today, so that feels pretty good. And let's take a look at the stats. Okay, so we are currently at 69% win rate, uh, 29 wins and 13 losses. Um, this doesn't take into account any games that I play on my tablet, unfortunately. So I did do a couple matches here earlier, but it gives you a pretty decent idea of like where we're at. Um, in terms of the specific matches, Mono Red is looking great. Nine wins, two losses there. So 82% against Mono Red, 75% against Boros. 67% against Selesnia. And then there are a couple matches here, like 50-50 against Mono White. Same with Orzov and Esper. 2-0 um, against um, Golgari. And then the Teamer matchup were 50-50 here. Only had a couple matches. And then Demir winning and Rakdos and uh, Abzan. Um, and then I think some of the tougher matchups here are potentially like the domain decks, but I think we actually have a pretty good matchup against them now with some of the changes. So we'll have to see, but thanks guys for watching. We will see you here in the next one and I hope you guys have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.